Maximize your wealth now. Yes, in business, finance, family, and lifestyle. Think about it as a certified financial educator. My whole goal for this program originally was to bring business and finance together with spiritual principles and universal laws. And all of it needs to come from the heart. Got it? Maximize your wealth now. Absolutely. Yes. Welcome back to Maximize Your Wealth Now. I am so honored to share with you about Shirlene Reeves, my co-host. Do you know that she is a certified financial educator? Now, there's a difference between a certified financial educator and a certified financial planner, and we're gonna find out what that is right now. Shirlene Reeves is an international speaker, certified financial educator, executive producer of WMAX TV, and a massive disability media instructor, blending business, finance, and universal principles. She strengthens your business and expands your vision through massive visibility so you can make a six or seven figure income while you sleep. Shirlene has a varied and balanced background with education and experience in both financial and spiritual principles. On the financial side, she is one of only 253 certified financial educators in the nation with more than 27 years of experience. She was the CEO of her own nationwide company for over 17 years, which she bootstrapped from zero to millions and has invested in real estate for more than 20 years. She has a BA in sociology with a minor in psychology and a BA and master's degree from the University of Metaphysics. On Maui, she trained with best-selling author and speaker Dr. Wayne Dyer, an American spiritual teacher and former Harvard professor Ram Das. Shirlene Reeves brings real-world training to the masses by sharing time-tested experiential business and financial concepts. Well, I'm glad you asked because it's a world of difference. A certified financial educator, in fact, there's only 253 of us in the nation, actually goes through a grueling testing and training period. And we are certified to teach on university campuses and business campuses. We actually go right in and teach the employees how to manage their money in an easy five-step process. It's so simple. Now, a financial advisor or a certified financial planner is very different. They work primarily in the market. Some of them stray out a little bit, but not too much. Mm -hmm. Whereas we look at the whole house. Okay. And can I give you an example? I would love that. Well, when I talk about the whole house, you would never build a house without all of the contractors speaking to each other, right? And coordinating how they're gonna have it laid out. In fact, they even have blueprints, right? Right, right. Yes, so the plumber knows where they're supposed to run their lines, the electrician knows where their lines are supposed to run, the foundation person knows exactly where all those studs are gonna go, and the roof fits on perfectly because they had a blueprint to follow. Right. With the people in our world, we don't have any blueprint to follow for finance. Have you ever noticed that? I was never given a financial blueprint. In fact, in our family, we didn't talk about money except that there wasn't enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear that a lot, believe me. <laughs> there isn't enough. I don't have enough. I, you know, That's like the total of a, a opposite of abundance, but we'll talk about that later. Sorry. But when you are looking at your financials, Always have someone that looks at the big picture, your whole financial house. So when, you, when I'm talking about this, I mean, you know how you have the insurance person over here, you have the banker over there, you have health insurance is entirely different from that, car insurance is over here, you have everything is in all different places, and then you have your financial advisor or your financial planner. Well, that's such a great point. Let me just stop and think about that. We have so many people that are really playing in our financial pool, yes. if you will. Yes. And they're like in a whole bunch of different areas, but we, I would never have considered them part of my financial planning. What I'm hearing from you say is that actually 
everything in your life is part of your financial picture. Your insurance, <laughs> your savings, your yes. income, your, all of that is part of your financial picture. So a financial planner might be able to talk to me about my investments in the market, but they're not going to go, oh, and by the way, your property and your car and your medical and your life insurance, they're not going to look at that whole big house. Exactly. So it's really important, what I'm understanding right now, is that it's really important that we all speak with somebody who is educated, like you, a as a certified financial educator, so that we can understand the big picture of our money instead of just maybe the little investments, which is, in my mind, that's what I think a lot of people think about when they think about investing, they think, or they think about money, right? They think about, oh, am I invested in the market or that kind of thing, and they don't really consider that their whole life and their whole picture is the is important. Absolutely. And they don't have any financial path. That's another thing. I love to sit down with people and say, okay, let's design a path that's going to have you four streams of income when you retire. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, four streams of income? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and it can be done. And the other thing is a lot of times we're paying things that we don't need to be paying. And I Thing, let's talk about a car a car payment just to start with. Okay. Your car payment. If you're making a car payment and your interest is high, you can get that interest down. You can refinance that car and have more money in your pocket every month instead of paying so much out. We don't even think about doing that kind of thing. That's so important. Right. Refinancing your car to save money every month. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> or we're paying on things that we don't need to be paying on like very high credit cards and mm. we go out and we run up the credit cards and then we've got 18 to 20 percent on our credit cards. There's things that we need to do and that's why I love to talk about the five steps to financial freedom. Hi, I'm Shirlene Reeves with Maximize Your Wealth Now with a new tip on how to maximize your wealth. What if you could compel your clients rather than selling them so that they would work with you? Wouldn't that be so much easier? Wouldn't it be easier to have more income? I talk to entrepreneur after entrepreneur, and they're running from networking group to networking group, and they're so tired. And the reason they're tired is because they're not making any money, and they don't know how to work with their perfect clients. What if I said to you, compel, don't sell, and I could give you the tips for how to do that. I'm tearing back the curtain, and I'm going to show you how I built my business from zero to multi-millions, and I want you to make multi-millions too. So check it out on my website, MaximizeYourWealthNow.com, and get signed up for the next class. I promise you, I guarantee you, you won't be sorry. Great. You know, this is one of our gifts, so I want everybody to pay attention now. We're going to learn about the five steps to financial freedom, and it's these are important things to know, so pay attention. All right, so I hope you have your pen out and a piece of paper because I'm going to give you some hot tips right now and you can look at your own financial plan and what you're doing and make changes today, right now, that are really going to make a difference. So let's get started. Cash flow. Cash flow is number one. I don't care what kind of job you get. Get some sort of job. Unemployment's going to run out. Sorry, people. <laughs> it's not always going to be there. And then you're going to have nothing. So you want to make sure that you have any kind of cash flow, at least a part-time job, so that you can have money on the table and pay your electric bill and whatever rent you need. So get a job that pays for your monthly costs. We call it a monthly nut. Okay. <laughs> monthly nut. I'll take it. <laughs> Number two is debt management. Really look at those credit cards. If you've got credit cards that up over 16%, boy, time to cut them up and pay them off as soon as you can because you can't even close it until you've paid it off. Right. And they're so high and so ridiculous that 
Do you know that you can divide into your credit card interest rate and find out how long it's going to take to double? And if it's at 18%, it's going to take close to three years and it's going to double just like that if you're wow. paying the minimum payment. Whoa, you, so your debt will double? Double. Oh my gosh, no. Yes, <laughs> and school loans are the same way. People, please think about those school loans because they are going to double consistently. And if you say, oh, I can't pay for this right now, they'll say, okay, fine. No problem. We're just going to collect the interest when you get there. Yes. It's oh one gosh. of the biggest incomes that the government has. Did you know that? Student loans? Yes. No, I did not know that. Yes. Wow. So debt management, so important. And then there's proper protection. You want to make sure that you have proper protection. If you don't have proper protection, protection and what I mean is car insurance, medical insurance, life insurance, long-term care, whatever it takes, you need to have it. Otherwise, your cash flow will no longer exist. It will get wiped out very, very quickly. That's so true. I mean, medical bills, forget it. It's yes. so expensive. So if you have some kind of a catastrophe where you need, um, you know, dot, con continuous care. Yes. Yeah. Yes, You'd absolutely. You'd want to be protected for that or it'd wipe you out. I get it. Yeah. Yep. So proper protection. And then the next thing is emergency fund. You want to make sure that you have an emergency fund because if you don't, you're going to get caught. And let me tell you how. Okay. There was a gal that came in my office just the other day and she, her car stalled about two months, two, excuse me, two blocks. <laughs> it was two months for her to overcome this problem, but two <laughs> blocks away. And she came in to me and said, Charlene, I really need to rent a car. And I said, well, where's your car? And she said, well, it's down the street. And I said, well, why would you rent a car when your car's just down the street? And she said, well... I don't have any money and I have to pay the tow truck guy to tow the car into the shop. And it's a big problem for me. So now I got to go rent a car because I can't pay to get it out of the shop. All I can afford now is the tow truck. Oh my goodness. And I'm in big trouble. And I said, well, gosh, uh, if you rent a car, then you're going to have to pay the car payment from that that car rental every day, which is not cheap, you know, yeah. it's expensive. Then you're paying the insurance on your own car. You're paying the payment on your own car. You just paid the tow truck and now you got to pay the shop. So you got five things to pay instead of having the money for the tow truck and just to pay the shop. Right. That's a lot of wasted money. A absolutely. So it would behoove her to have had an emergency fund. Yeah, just a, <laughs> even a couple thousand dollars if you can do that. Do the emergency fund. It's so very important. And it will save you every time. If you need to go to the doctor or something like that, you have the money. Maybe you're in a different country. you got to have the money. And our insurance doesn't cover so it in a different country. What are you going to do? So maybe you wouldn't even be there if you don't have an emergency fund. I don't know. <laughs> but then the last thing is long-term savings. And this is where we've got it all upside down. Long-term savings is your 401k. It's going to be anything to do with uh, vet investments, um, playing in the market, whatever it has to do with. Maybe it's buying real estate, investment real estate. It could be that. It could be anything. That's your long-term savings. And what happens is when we go to work at a job, they're soon pushing under your nose the 401k if you're full time. And they'll say, oh, in 90 days, you're going to get to do the 401k and we're going to match you this little bit. Yes. Right. Right. Isn't that right? <laughs> well, I'm trying to tell you, it's such a little bit. If you got high interest credit cards, you have no emergency fund and you have no protection for your family. Forget it. Now is not the time. Perhaps you can do it later, but get your other four steps straightened out before you start investing in a 401k. I meet with people all the time. You won't believe this. They're putting money in a 401k and they've got a ton of debt. They've got very little cash flow, no protection at all for their family. And all the money's going in the 401k. And what happens when they turn around, the money's gone because what's been happening to the, the market, market, right? The market's been so that's down, like a right? gift to the 401k. <laughs> to the, it's a gift to the market. So <laughs> stay in order. Make sure you've got those five steps down pat. Cash flow, debt management, proper protection, 
emergency fund and then long-term savings last, last. Then you've got a full financial house. You've been doing it the right way. That's so brilliant. Okay, so there's an order to money. First thing you need to do is get your cash flow in order. Next thing you make to get your debt under control, you want the lowest interest rate on any debt that you have outstanding. Third thing I heard was protection. You wanna make sure you're protected with the right insurances. And after that, we can talk about long-term savings. And after that, we can talk about an emergency fund for any unusual circumstances that come up. Well, emergency fund comes before long-term savings. Okay. Long-term savings is always last. Always last. Good to know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so just keep that in mind, and I think it'll really change your financial picture. I gave you a lot to look at today, but start with those credit cards. Really look at those credit cards, and I'm going to give you a strategy on another segment for how to pay those off, and I think you're going to love it because it's so easy. Ooh, I like that. Our four cornerstones for successful investing are growth, safety, tax advantage, and protection. So one of the questions that I ask people is, where do people put their money? Where do you put your money? And they might say the bank. And when we're talking about a bank, we're probably talking about a CD or maybe just a savings account. But my question is, is there growth in the bank? Well, right now, we can't say there's a whole lot of growth in the bank, right? I mean, it might be less than 1%. So no, there's not a whole lot of growth, or maybe we can just say a teeny tiny bit. And then the next thing is, is it safe in the bank? Well, yeah, they, it's FDIC protected, so we will say it's safe in the bank. But is there any tax advantage at all? No, there's no tax advantage, and also there's no protection for you or your family. So the bank is not a great place for you to leave your money sitting because every month it's losing money based on inflation. Now, where else might you think of putting money? Hey, okay, let's talk about a 401k. Is there growth in a 401k? Yes and no, because we've lost a great amount of money at different periods, 2007, 2008 being a huge loss, huge loss. So that would mean there really isn't any safety either. And then what about our tax advantage? The tax advantage is small at the beginning of a 401k and it's deferred. So we have to say yes, it does have a tax advantage because yes, it is deferred, but does it have any protection for you or your family? And I'm talking about life insurance, long-term care, health insurance, car insurance, anything that protects your cash flow. So no, there's no protection. And we've got three no's here. So maybe the 401k isn't the greatest investment. So some people say the next thing might be real estate. Well, let's talk about real estate. Do we have growth in real estate? It really, really depends on where you live. Um, people are it's different in different areas. If you're in California, they're going to say, oh, yeah, there's growth. But we never really know for sure because we lost a lot of money in 2007, 2008 also. So I'm going to put yes and no because it really depends on where your real estate is. Is it safe? No, it's not safe because we don't know what the market's going to do. We don't know if it's going to go up and down and it doesn't always come back in everybody's areas. Does it have tax advantage? Yes, it does have tax advantage. It has a small amount if it's your personal residence and a bigger amount if it's a rental, which is why so many people buy rentals so that they can have that tax advantage. So we're going to say yes. But is there any protection for you or your family other than maybe a roof over your head? I would have to say no. There's no health insurance, life insurance, long-term care, disability, anything of insurance type product like that that can that can protect your cash flow or your family so we'll say no so maybe real estate isn't the best either and then some people say to me well what if i just stick it under my mattress well let's try that 
We'll put it under the mattress, okay? So is there growth under the mattress? Maybe mold, that's about it. So we'll have to say no growth. Is there safety? Well, not really. What if you have a fire in the house? Would it be safe then? No, of course it wouldn't. Is there tax advantage to it sitting under the mattress or in your safe at home? No, there's no tax advantage and there's no protection for your family, so that's out. So you're saying, well, where am I supposed to put my money? I don't know. I thought those were all the places that I would put my money. Call the National Financial Literacy Center to attend a complimentary financial course in your local area. Call 800-299-9800. That's 800-299-9800. of Wainwright Global Incorporated has dedicated her life to helping others discover their life purpose so that they can actualize their purpose with a new level of confidence, generating spiritual abundance and inner peace. Barbara's business experience mirrors that of the American dream when as a single mother struggling to support her children, she founded JF Positive Systems, a software development company which she ran for 22 years. With a deepening desire to make a difference, Barbara began sharing sharing her knowledge and experience to help others to succeed. Medicine here are on purpose for a comfortable life. We're all here to stretch, to grow, to give back, to be the best that we can be. That's why you're here. Using the theory of the mind, positive thinking, NLP, goal setting, personal motivation, and accountability, which are the key ingredients to her success. Barbara is responsible for training over 6,000 professional coaches on six different continents since 2006 and has established credibility in the coaching industry through acquiring third-party accreditation at the graduate university level, accredited by AASCB and by the Strategic Learning Alliance, an applied learning credentialing organization. I wanted to share with you how you can have a very solid foundation so that you are living your truth. And the ways to do that is to know your values, to know your principles, to know and have a mindset of yes I can, and, and then to have and be congruent with all of those things in your actions. The things that I, I think of as values are acceptance, learning acceptance, acceptance of all people, right? Loving everyone, loving everything, loving everyone. And we need to see ourselves in everything, even if it makes you uncomfortable. It's still part of you, right? It's still part of you. We are all connected. We are all one. We're connected, okay? So love, joy, happiness, attitude, enthusiasm, right? Do you value confidence? Do you value humility? Do you value your authenticity? How can you be authentic if you don't know these things? You can't. You have to know who you are and what you value so that you can be authentic and in your truth. Gratitude. Gra being grateful and in gratitude for the things that we are receiving every day. I mean, I'm grateful for everything that occurs in my life. Even what might have seemed like a difficult time, raising four children as a single mom, tough. But you know, it's, it's okay, it made me who I am today. Compassion, having compassion for others, and, and trust. I, trust is so big because, you know, when things are happening and it doesn't feel right and you, you, you don't know why it's happening, and it might be because you're expanding in your personality, things might be expanding around you and you're stepping out of your comfort zone and you're, you're not sure. Trust is so important in that case. You need to trust that everything is in alignment with who you are and who you are going to be. And trust that what is coming to you is coming to you for your highest good. And it's sometimes it doesn't look like your highest good, but in the end, it will be for your highest good because that's the way the universe operates. It helps us to grow and it is responsive. The universe is responsive and responding to who we are being. Tolerance, patience, forgiveness. These are all values. What is it that you value? Do you value being generous? Do you value giving back? What do you value? Show up for God and God will show up for you in miraculous ways. For me, love encompasses all the other values, right? Knowing your principles, 
What do you stand for? If you don't know what your principles are, you can get lost. You can get lost in life. How do you want to show up in the world? That's, that's really the key. How do you want to show up in the world? Do you want to show up with your honesty, with your integrity, and be true to everything that you're, you're talking about and you're speaking? So showing up and being true to yourself, very important. Having compassion, do you want to show up like that? Do you want to give back? Do you want to be of service? These are all things that you need to know so that when you show up and somebody says to you, hi, hey, how are you? What do you do? How can I help you? How can I serve? That you can say, well, here's what I'm really going for. And you need to know it. It needs to be in alignment. I call this in alignment with your values and your principles. So you want to be in alignment. What motivates you? What drives you? And what are your limiting beliefs? What, what is it that, and I don't know if we can know what our own limiting beliefs are, that's kind of a challenge, that's why I say, you know, getting a coach or a mentor or somebody to help you to have some breakthroughs. How engaged are you? How engaged are you in your life? So these are some questions that if you, if you take them to heart and you can answer them from that inner place, it'll help you a lot to move forward. People that are living in the cage life, are living back in, they haven't really explored, they haven't really examined, they haven't really gone inside. They're the, like a victim, not really uh, wanting to grow. They're not focused on making change in their life. They, they just want to get up in the morning, go to work, come home, go to bed, get up in the morning, go to work, come home. And, and that's it. That's the comfortable life. You're going to live an extraordinary life. That means you need to find your optimism, right? You need to find your enthusiasm and find out what you're enthusiastic for. And knowing your values and your principles is going to bring that all together for you. Here's some more things that you want to ask yourself. Are your actions in alignment with your values and your principles? How do your actions impact your family? Your actions, are they in alignment with your values and your principles? As far as your personal growth, do your actions make you feel good? Do they give you more confidence? Do they help you stretch? Do they help you grow? Your heart, how about your heart? Are you, are you in the right place for you to feel fulfilled? Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant? to be gorgeous, to be talented, to be fabulous. Who am I? Actually, who are you not to be? Who are you not to be that fabulous, gorgeous, beautiful person that you are? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. So we need to step up. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, to shine light as our children do. We're all meant to shine. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in every one of us. Those of us that are walking it, it's up to us to bring it out in the others that we are associated with. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give permission to other people to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others.